The lipids are another example of a biological molecule. It's another category of biological molecule. And there are a lot of subgroupings within the lipids. A lot of different types of molecules reside in this category. Uh, what they all have in common is that they are hydrophobic. Uh, another way to say that is that they are nonpolar. Okay, so they form bonds that are not polar and consequently they don't like to mix with water. Um, you probably are familiar with, with like if at home if you've tried to mix oil and water they don't mix. The oil tends to float on top of the water so that's a great example of, um, of lipid behavior. Lip lipids don't like to mix with water. So hydrophobic this means water fearing and this is something that all lipids have in common. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples of lipids. The first example is a familiar category to us, the fats. Okay, so this is something that, um, that we have in our diets and in moderation it's important to have a certain amount of fats in your diet. And if we're talking about the molecules that make up fat, um, the individual molecules are called triglycerides. Let's take a look at the structure of a triglyceride. Triglycerides have what's called a glycerol molecule and three fatty acid molecules attached to it. So let me put this schematic down. Here is a glycerol molecule. Here is a fatty acid molecule. Okay, so we need to have three of these fatty acids attached in order for it to be a triglyceride. So let's jump down to this one. Okay, this schematic right here, this is a triglyceride glycerol molecule and one, two, three fatty acid chains attached. These fatty acid chains store a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy stored in these bonds. Um, so this can be a very rich source of energy for our bodies. And there are two different styles of um, fatty acid chains that we might encounter. Saturated versus unsaturated. This is on the slide right here. Saturated fatty acids have the maximum number of hydrogens attached that they possibly can. So each of the carbons in this chain has formed a maximum amount of bonds to neighbors. Remember, carbons can form up to four bonds with their neighbors. If we look down at this one right here, we have a, we have a spot right here where there is a carbon um, that has only formed three bonds. Okay, so this carbon that I'm sort of circling right here, it's reaching out and holding on to its neighbor on the left. It's holding on to one hydrogen atom and it's holding on to its neighbor on the right. That's only three, uh, three bonds. It has a potential to form one more bond. So we would say that this carbon is unsaturated. It has not been saturated with hydrogens just yet. Okay, so if we come along and add another hydrogen right there, um, then this would become a saturated chain. So anyway, saturated versus unsaturated fatty acid chains, this ends up influencing the behavior of the fat that we're talking about. Um, saturated fatty acid chains like these, see how nice and straight they are? They pack against each other really easily. And so this ends up forming the sort of fat that tends to be solid at room temperature. It's easy for the molecules to pack and settle in against each other. And this is the sort of fat that we see in butter. It's solid at room temperature even. Unsaturated fats, these tend to show up in things that are liquid at room temperature. And these are what we call the oils. Oils are usually a liquid at room temperature. And it's because they have all these bends in the chains. If you have a lot of unsaturated points, there are gonna be a lot of bends in the chains and they just don't pack against each other as well. Another good example of a lipid, this is a different category of lipid, uh, but it's still a hydrophobic molecule. Another good example would be steroids. And the thing that's really characteristic about steroids is that they have a ring structure. They have one, two, three, four, four carbon rings. Each of the corners on this, um, on these structures, each of the of the corners has a carbon atom living there. Um, they just didn't write out all the C's because it would look pretty messy. But um, steroids have this, these four fused rings. And a good example of a steroid is actually cholesterol. cholesterol. Cholesterol is something that's present in all of our cells. We're gonna be talking about cells next week. Um, but cholesterol, this is something that 
that we need, it, uh, it's necessary for our cells to function correctly, it's also something that can be used as a precursor for a lot of other things. So I'm sure probably when you hear the word steroid, probably cholesterol is not what originally came to your mind. You might be thinking like steroids that cause muscle bulk when people work out. Um, and that is true, those are also steroids. Those are actually steroids that are derived from cholesterol. And so cholesterol in our bodies can be modified in order to produce testosterone and also estrogen. Those are also examples of steroids.